Where are we at? What are we doing? Is that what you said? Yeah. We are in beautiful Santa Cruz, California. We crossed over the 17 and um, survived. A little black ice on 17. It was cold this morning. But now we are racing the Cat's Hill Classic. It's been around for like 50 years. Cat's Hill Classic? Yeah, we just, we have, to do, we, have to do the, we have to do the whole thing over again. Hi, dude. How are we feeling? Well, good in a second because <laughs> Keto Nike is coming through. Here with the young stud, the goat, Sean on the team. Yes, sir. We're about to chug some ketones pre-race, and then we're going to boil down the plan. I think we should cross the finish line first. Yeah, that sounds like a good plan. All right, let's cheers to that. <laughs> Doesn't get better, does it? <laughs> <laughs> How are we feeling today? Feeling good. Yeah, we're about to go get kitted up. Roman's always got a plan, so I think Ryan's got this in the bag. So we're going to be working for him today, I'm pretty sure, but it should be fun. Play. Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to day two of the Highway 17 Omnium. If you missed the Cat's Hill Classic from yesterday, pop on over and check that out right now. But this is the Santa Cruz Classic Criterium. One of my favorites, another technical, difficult crit with a hill in it. We're about to approach one of the first major features of this course. I'm going to move up on the inside here on the first lap. This is a hairpin uh, just after the start finish and then you go down this hill. We'll take a lap here. We'll talk about the course. We'll talk about the competition. A lot of the competition you guys will know from yesterday's video from the Cat's Hill Classic. Um, we have Avolo, this, this rider in front of me, professional rider. We have Lance from Legion of Los Angeles, Tobin, professional cyclocross racer, and then all of those local teams and local hitters that you guys know from listening to this channel. And then of course us on Team Mike Spikes. We won yesterday at Cat's Hill. Sorry, spoiler, if you haven't checked out that video yet, but Ryan was the winner. And he also won this race, Santa Cruz Classic, last year. So he's definitely the rider to protect, to look out for, and eventually to lead out for the sprint finish. He's going so good in field sprints right now. So how do we execute that? Well, the first thing is we need to keep it together for a field sprint. There were, again, I think there were seven of us on Team Mike Spikes this day. We definitely had the numbers, and uh, we definitely had the motivation to keep that Omnium lead with Ryan. So in order to keep it together, it's, it's marking attacks, it's neutralizing attacks, it's stacking breakaways, and it's making sure that Ryan is protected until that last possible moment with about 200 meters to go so he can uncork the sprint and hopefully take home the W. And as I've been talking, we've, we've just hit the bottom of the hill, which is the second feature of this course. It's probably a, only a couple hundred meters at like, I want to say 7%. You can see people just stand up and kind of do like six or 700 watts. I, I like to say that it's, it's kind of similar to the Cat's Hill Classic, but instead of one block at over 20%, it's just kind of stretched out and it's like two to three blocks at maybe six or 7%. And then uh, kind of a false flat one to 2% straight away into the finish line. But anyway, back to the plan. In our team meeting before the race even started, we specifically called out three and a half laps to go. Three and a half laps to go is when we could safely take the front with the numbers that we had, control the final few laps of the race, and then make sure that Sean, Ryan, and myself are protected in order to execute that lead out. So early on, I was kind of struggling to move up. I wasn't finding the right spot. The hill's not where you want to do it, but this flat spot coming over the top, a lot of people rest because they're tired from the hill. And you can see, yeah, I did some power there. Not going to lie, it was maybe uh, 600 watts, 500 watts for a little bit. But you can sometimes catch this moment um, where there's a hard feature on a course, in this case that hill, and then everyone kind of sits up and looks at each other. Nobody wants to pull into a headwind over like a false flat start finish straight away. So do a little bit of power. I just made up like 40 wheels. Why did I do that? Up here, it is so much easier. Look how much faster I'm taking this hairpin. I get choice lines. I'm up here with the strongest riders. Um, you can see in the rear camera, this is Tobin. In front of me is Lance from Legion. In front of him is somebody I forgot to mention, actually. It's Iman. Um, so surrounded with the strongest riders, this is the place to be to save energy, believe it or not, closer to the front. The draft isn't quite as good, but uh, better, faster, more efficient lines where you're not crowded on both sides by, you know, five, six riders wide who are going to maybe force you into either a dangerous situation or just a really inefficient situation. You can see here, um, you know, I talk about this all the time on the channel. It's, uh, it's it, consistency is efficiency. You can see my power. It's not spiking up all over the place. Um, I'm, I'm generally pretty consistent. I'm spending very little time at zero watts coasting, uh, which might seem like a good thing if you're coasting. You're not using that much energy, but 
that you're gonna have to make up for that at some point. You know, these races we average sometimes close to 30 miles an hour, and if you're just coasting, that means you're gonna have to sprint later on, which is not ideal. So, as we come into this final corner, I am preserving all of my speed and momentum. You see, I go all the way out to that curb, and yeah, I'm doing a lot of power, but I also started the the bottom of the climb with all of this energy, all of this speed, all of this momentum, and as a result, there's this big gap behind me, and this is another added benefit of being close to the front. I might just accidentally make the breakaway here. Sometimes it's just this easy where um, you do a hard surge in power, you're in the draft, and somebody on the front is just going super hard, and if you find yourself in a really good position, it's not so much a breakaway as it's like a split. You're on the right side of a split, and looking back in the rear camera here, I remember this moment, I was like, wow, that was really hard, but I was in the draft, which means it's even harder for the people on the front doing the work, and likewise, it's really hard for the people back behind this split trying to close that gap. And I didn't realize until looking at this footage after the fact that, wow, that was actually kind of a significant gap that we had. You can see it maybe better through that corner with the strongest riders in the race. So, so it seemed very promising, but like you can see right now, everyone kind of sat up, looked around, and um, it really lacked that push, that motivation for everyone to start rotating. And with 36 kilometers to go, it was kind of, kind of early on in the race anyway. Everyone's still quite fresh. So we were eventually brought back. And this was the trend for like the next 40 minutes of this race. Lots of shuffling around like this. Um, lots of small groups would get away, splits would form, attacks would fly, counterattacks would go, but it just never really had that correct composition of riders um, who A, were strong enough and A, were motivated enough to really commit to the breakaway, rotate hard, put their heads down. So when we approach the end of this race, it's all back together for a field sprint, which is exactly what we wanted to begin with. Let's see how that shakes out. And the first thing you'll notice is like the announcer said, we are assembling at Mike's Bikes is assembling at the front end. But this is way earlier than we, than we talked about in our pre-race meeting. We talked about three and a half laps to go. We started assembling at like six laps to go. So I was a bit caught off guard by this. It's time to move up. And finally, with about a little over four kilometers to go, I see some daylight, and I do a pretty big effort up the hill. Not the best place to move up, like I said. And I want to join my teammates on the front, but suddenly Jason Saltzman sends it. And I'm in no position not to follow this. This is my role in this race, to support Ryan, and I cannot let somebody as strong as Jason just get away on this hill. And he is going for it, you guys. So um, hard effort, right into hard effort. He elbows me through, and that's a hard pass for me. Sorry, Jason, you're a bro. But taking a pull right now is not going to benefit my chances or the team's chances. So I'm just going to continue to follow, and uh, he flicks me one more time, and it's funny. I had to try. He says, I had to try. I was like, yeah, fair enough. And I apologize I couldn't rotate through. Um, but I, look, Jason, you're too strong, man. It's a tip of the cap to you. And now I'm in this weird position where I'm on the front. I don't want to be on the front. You can see my shadow. I'm looking back. I'm doing 150 watts because... Um, it's my role to, to try to lead Ryan out, and uh, being on the front and wasting energy right now is not the place to be. So I'm going to sit up and uh, chill and just try to join my teammates um, in the lead out because I still have a few more teammates on the front, even though we're now we're three and a half kilometers to go. Uh, I kind of want to shuffle back. I want to get right next to Ryan, right next to Sean, make sure I'm going to be there to protect and lead him out for the, the sprint finish. And uh, this is predictable counterattack. Every time, anytime anything slows down like this, um, that's what's going to happen, and uh, it's a good thing Gavin's on top of it because uh, he's going to Gavin's going to going to chase that back teammate Gavin. And now I'm this is the mistake I'm, I make right here is I should just start following these. I'm still pretty tired, but uh, I'm not terribly tired. 164 beats per minute is pretty controlled. I should be following these. I'm letting too many riders pass me, including Ryan. That's Ryan who just passed me, and I should just be kind of getting back into the fold here. And um, it's going to cost me. That doesn't seem like much, you guys, but. Letting that number of riders pass you on a difficult technical course like this, in the closing laps especially, it can be really hard to recover from, um, especially when there's no control on the, on the front. You notice that there were some purple jerseys, some teammates that passed me, but we do not have control of this race anymore. You have all of these people who are going super hard on the front, trying to get away. They don't want it to come to a field sprint, and um, that's going to make it really hard to, to make up ground, to move up. You can see it's single file. It's going really fast right now. 500 watts just on the flats here in the draft so uh it's i'm kind of my position's kind of locked in right if it were like a big four corner square crit it, it'd be a lot easier to to make up ground in the closing laps but on a course like this you really want to maintain your good position near the front to the best extent possible uh with the last couple of laps and that's where we're at now i think we just passed two to go um i need to move up and join ryan because he is 
maybe eight riders in front of me, which is which is a pretty pretty a hard task at this point in the race to make up that sort of ground um, without absolutely killing yourself in order to do so. And I just need to looking at this, looking back at this, I just need to pop out in the wind and just do an effort to get up there, because well, I'm not saving my legs for my sprint. Like that's not what I'm doing. I'm saving my legs to lead Ryan out into his sprint, which means my effort it comes even earlier. It's it's even though there's there's two kilometers left, my effort comes well before that. So I need to move up. I should not be losing ground right now. And it's kind of cringe looking back. This is pretty rookie mistake. Losing position. Like I've said before, you can be the strongest rider in the world, but if you're not in the proper position to use your power, then it means nothing. You're not going to win the race. You're not going to execute team goals in this case. And uh, yeah, still getting passed on the right side. You can tell everybody's quite desperate to move up right now. And I'm just not in that front group. And it's going to get worse for me, believe it or not, because... Um, you're going to see another uh, series of mistakes that I make here, or a, a, just a set of, uncircum of unfortunate circumstances. And uh, that's going to start here, my decision to go left instead of right. Sometimes that's the way the cookie crumbles, but I need to move up. I am yelling at my teammate RJ right now to move up, but there's nothing he can do, right? There's a curb on his left, there's riders to the front of him, and there's riders to the right. And right here, this is the frustrating part. If you look to the right, you can see Ryan, you can see Sean, you can see my teammates. Coming through Bell Lap, they're starting the lead out, and I just want to be up there having fun and, and uh, helping out as best as I can, but I am just stuck here. I am a, I'm a prisoner in this peloton with no place to go, and this is really the moment where I should be, be helping Ryan out. This is where I should be on the front doing a hard effort, leading things out, making things fast, making sure he's got an armchair ride into the bottom of that final hill, but instead I'm like 20 wheels back, just got swarmed so hard, and now I'm behind Sean, and he's going to be doing the same thing as me. Like, we're just going to look for a way... It, yeah, that's me yelling at Sean. Up, Sean, up, Sean. So I'm yelling at another teammate to bring me up there. He's going to be doing the same thing as me. We're just trying to move up, trying to support the team in any way we can because there's no point in me uncorking a sprint at the end of this race for myself, right? We are going for the team win for Ryan's overall Omnium win and uh, not looking good here. Uh, my position is just, just brutal. I really need to be on the front as soon as possible, but uh, really trying to make up ground. It's just hard to do so in this position the road it's even harder now because the road narrows so now there's really no space for me to move up and it's at this point where i'm like well <laughs> there's i can't move up anymore um, until the bottom of this hill so i may as well just uh uncork a sprint anyway and just see if i can maybe get up there in the top 10 because why the hell not at this point but um unfortunately no lead out duty for me today i'm just going to see how long i can hold about a thousand watts on this climb and uh we'll see how many people i can pass and by the time I get to the top here, I'm, I'm, I'm passing a fair number of riders, and um, I get a glimpse of what's going on at the front there, and I can see the magic happening. I can see how that whole thing unfolded, and I know it doesn't capture it well on the GoPro, so it's a good thing that I have Ryan's footage. Let's pop over to Ryan's footage and see how that last lap played out. All right, Ryan camera. Here we go. He is on the right, and I was on the left. This is that moment where I was a prisoner in the peloton coming through one lap to go. I'm just off screen to the left. And you can see the mistake that I made. It's all clogged up on the left. And uh, this is this is Sean, young Sean, coming out in front of Ryan. Man, I wanted to play with these guys so much up front and uh, just contribute to this. This just looked like so much fun to me. But uh, this is the ideal situation. We have Sean in front of Ryan, leading him out. And there's even one rider kind of giving a bonus lead out here for Sean, alleviating some of the pressure because this is... This is a pretty long lead out for Sean to handle by himself uh, from from this far out. It's hard to keep it fast just by yourself. You, you want to be doing something like, you know, 30, 35 miles an hour to the best extent possible, all the way to 200 meters to go, which is why this is excellent news for Sean when the Tehran rider comes to the front and essentially just contributes to the lead out here for Mike's bikes, helps out Sean. I have an overlay. This is Sean's power, uh, and you can see just how well he executes this lead out. We're not going to be doing anything crazy spiking up over a thousand watts a good lead out is smooth and consistent and just ensures that your that your sprinter is protected until that final moment ryan's not having to spike up big numbers uh he, it's a very measured consistent effort even when he's standing up you can see that sean is not doing some crazy amount of power i think it was 800 watts so we hit the bottom of this hill timing it perfectly sean's going to stand up one last time and just bring Ryan up to speed, sheltered in this draft as long as possible. And look what this does. Iman decides to go early on the left, and because of Sean's amazing leadout, Ryan is able to pop in that draft, get one second of reprieve before putting his head down when the road flattens out. He's still got over 1,000 watts to contribute to this sprint. 
which is good enough to take down the W. So stoked for my team, and I was so pumped to see this, and also very excited that Ryan shared his footage so we could enjoy this together on the channel. Your 2023... <laughs> it sounds like Ryan's stoked too. Your 2023 Highway 17 Omnium Champion, Ryan. Stoked for you, buddy. Don't forget to smash that subscribe button if you guys like this content. And as always, I'll catch you in the next one.